Alright dear students, in this lecture we are going to do question number 180 and the name of the question is Lunda. So first of all let's go to the requirement and see what we have there. In the A requirement we have describe substantive procedures you should perform to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence in relation to the above three matters. And there is a separate allocation of marks over here. You can see for bank loan, there are four marks. That means you have to write four procedures at least. And then you have uh, the inventory. Yes, this is inventory valuation. And you have got six marks for it. Six procedures. And then you have the revaluation of property plan and equipment which has five marks so five procedures and remember one thing that this is a case study question I have already told you when we were dealing with the substantive procedures that when in the exam you are having a case study that means you have to relate your procedures with the case study and your procedure should be according to the case study and if you are writing a general procedure like for example someone has crammed the procedures of revaluation and directly he or she is writing that procedure and there is no relationship with the case study you are not going to get the marks for it so this is something very important that you should know how to relate the procedures with the case study and we'll be discussing it now as well so Elunda company manufacture chemical compounds using a continuous production process its year end was 31st July 2006 and the draft profit before tax is 13.6 million you are the audit supervisor and the year end audit fee is due to uh, sorry the year end audit is due to commence shortly the following matters have been brought to your attention <clears throat> Now again when you are dealing with the procedure you have to do the same thing which we are doing in every question. The, after reading the paragraph you have to brainstorm and you have to bring those points in your mind regarding the revaluation. That how we do the revaluation, where those revaluation things are recorded. So that you are able to write the correct documents, correct records, correct treatments. Now revaluation of property, plan and equipment and we know that this is IAS 16 but anyways if you don't remember the number of the standard that is something irrelevant. At the beginning of the year management undertook an extensive review of Elunda company's non-current asset valuations and as a result decided to update the carrying amount of all PPE. The finance director Peter Dullman contacted his brother Martin who is a valuer and requested that Martin's firm undertake the valuation which took place in August 2 x 5 and the year end is 31st July that means at the start of the year they have done the revaluation because year end is 31st July 20x6. At the start of the year, they have done the revaluation. Okay, now when we are making the procedures, first of all, we will be brainstorming a few things. That okay, we have to make the procedures related to the revaluation. And we know that IS 16 states that that the revaluation revaluation process should be independent. That means the valuer should be independent and also have the expertise and the qualification or degree to perform the valuation otherwise if they are not independent if they do not have any expertise if they do not have any qualification or, or relevant degree to perform that thing or they are not a member of the professional body that means the figures are not going to be unbiased they are going to be biased and then when the revaluation is done, the non-current asset register will be updated. The difference between the carrying value versus the revalued amount 
will be recorded in the revaluation surplus and in the other comprehensive income. And then depreciation should be charged on the revalued amount and the remaining useful lives. All right. And then there should be appropriate disclosures provided in the notes to the financial statements. Now, this is the first thing you need to know regarding the revaluation. Now, when you are making the procedure, you will be able to write these things straight away. So, first thing that they have done the revaluation. At the beginning of the year, management undertook an extensive review of the Elinda's non contested valuation and as a result decided to update the carrying value of all the PPE. And there is one more thing which we just forgot to write that once the revaluation is done, all assets of same class should be revalued. Now, first of all, we need to know which assets are being revalued. So you need to obtain the schedule of the PP or you can uh, say the list of the PP of the assets which have been revalued. So obtain a schedule of all the PPEs being revalued during the year or you can say at the start of the year because it was at the start of the year and cast to confirm the completeness and accuracy of the revaluation and agree the figures to the trial balance and financial statements. So this is the first procedure because it makes sense that you have to write this first procedure that obtain the schedule of all PPEs because you need to know how uh, which assets are being revalued, how many assets are being revalued and then you will be casting it to confirm the accuracy. Then Now accuracy means whether they have been recorded the correct value and completeness means whether they have been recorded everywhere where they should have been recorded. So you are comparing those figures with the trial balance and then from the trial balance that will move to the financial statements. And then you will be assessing the competence of the valuer. Assess the independence, competence and expertise. of the valuer. So you need to see whether the person who has done the revaluation and who is over here the name was written. Finance director Peter Delman contacted his brother Martin. Now Martin is the revaluer. Assess the independence and expertise of the valuer which is Martin. This can be done by looking through his qualification and membership of a professional body. All right. First of all, you have obtained the schedule and then you have assessed the competence. Now we can write other procedures, which includes 
inspect the independent valuers report and agree the figures in the report with that of asset register so now what you are looking at that there will be figures on the independent value report which are the market values fair values and see whether the same figures have been recorded in the asset register all right then you can recalculate the revaluation recalculate the revaluation gain or loss by comparing the carrying value make sure in the paper you're writing full carrying value i'm just writing cv over here recalculate the revaluation gain or loss by comparing the carrying value with the fair values on the independent values report agree the figure with that of revaluation surplus and other comprehensive income obtain the depreciation schedule to confirm depreciation is calculated on the revalued amounts and remaining useful life because once the revaluation is done the new depreciation should be recorded should be calculated based on the revalued amount and remaining useful life now how many procedures we have writ written so far one two three four five and how many we are supposed to write <clears throat> we are supposed to write five but we can write one or two more specifically related to confirm that all assets of same class have been revalued so how we can confirm this we can simply write confirm whether all assets of same class have been revalued to ensure there is no cherry picking and then review the notes to the financial statements to ensure complete and adequate disclosures are given <coughs> sorry we can write many other procedures as well but these are sufficient so you see first of all we have brainstormed few things and then we have written the procedures <clears throat> all right now we'll be moving toward the next part and the next part i'll be just explaining these things and then you can write the procedures yourself 
inventory valuation and we know this is IAS2 and the general principle of inventory is first of all inventory has three components raw material work in progress and finished goods and from our planning and risk assessment area we know that the raw material and the finished goods are easy thing but the working progress valuation requires expertise so this area is actually problematic you need to have skills and expertise to value the work in progress because mostly this is done based on the stage of completions and management have their own process uh, based on the nature of the inventory to value the work in progress because it may be cars for example so for cars it can be an easier way to just see the stage of completion it may be furniture or it may be for example big machineries <clears throat> it may be small chips depends on the nature of the inventory so and the second thing which is important regarding valuation is inventory should be recorded at lower of cost or NRV. Your firm <coughs> sorry, attended inventory count for Illumina company and ascertained that the process for recording work in progress and finished goods was acceptable. That's fine. Both work in progress and finished goods are material to the financial statement, that means significant figures. And the quantity and the stage of completion of all going production was recorded accurately during the count. So this company is actually producing the inventory. So the cost will be seen from their cost card. That means direct material, direct labor, direct expenses, variable overheads. So this will constitute the cost and you can see that cost through their cost card. For direct material you can see the relevant invoices for how much they are buying the material. For direct labor you can see the contracts, how much they are paying and then for these two you can see the allocation and apportionments. the basis of the apportionment because there are different bases for allocating and apportioning the variable overheads. For NRV you can see their price list, you can see their post year end invoices, the, at how much amount they are selling right after the year end. Remember we did this in some other uh, procedures as well that right after the year and how much they have received from the receivables that is the amount that should be recorded at year end so for example they have recorded the inventory at dollar hundred but right after the year end they have sold it for dollar ninety so it should be recorded at dollar ninety rather than dollar hundred during the inventory count the count supervisor noted that the consignment of finished goods compound E243, this is the name of the product, with a value of 7,20,000 was defective in that the chemical mix was incorrect. <clears throat> the finance director believes the compound E243 can be still sold at a discounted sum of 4 lakhs. So the cost was 7,20,000 and now the net realizable value is 4 lakhs. So you need to confirm again cost from the cost card is looking at the direct material, direct labor and direct expenses. So the same way you will be writing the procedures. The first procedure will be the same, obtain the schedule which includes schedule of inventory which includes raw material, work in progress and finished goods. Again, cast it for completeness and accuracy. The first procedure is going to be the same which we did in the non-current asset. So obtain the inventory schedule. In inventory schedule, there will be the complete details. Obtain the inventory schedule. 
which includes raw material, work in progress, and finished goods. And then cast it for accuracy and completeness. See whether correct totals have been mentioned over there. And agree the figures to the trial balance and financial statements. And then for the stage of completion, inquire or discuss with management how they determine the stage of completion. Then based on the same method, recalculate the work in progress and agree, to the, agree the figures to the, to the uh, figures which have been mentioned on the stock count report. When they were doing the stock count, they have recorded the work in progress figures. So recalculate the work in progress and agree the figures with those stock count figures. And then the defective inventory, which is E243. See, first of all, the cost. Confirm that 7 lakh. How you'll be confirming from the cost card, looking at the direct material, direct labor, and other apportionments. For NRV, which they're saying, first of all, inquire them that how they think that it, it is going to be sold for 4 lakh. They will be explaining how it can be sold for still 4 lakh. And then see post year and sales invoices to confirm that this is the correct NRV. And then the difference between the cost and the NRV, which is 7,20,000 minus 400,000, is 3,20,000, should be recorded as a loss in the profit and loss. And accordingly, inventory value should be reduced. And then see whether appropriate disclosures have been provided. So you are supposed to write six procedures. Now, there will be penalty of procedures you can write. So first of all, inquire. Now inquire regarding. I'm not writing the full procedure. You can write it yourself. Just practice it. Inquire from the finance director regarding the methodology used for work in progress, that how they actually determine the stage of completion. And then recalculate based on the same methodology and then agree the figures with that of inventory count sheet. And then confirm the cost of 700,000 through this thing. And then confirm the NRV by this thing and then see whether the inventory has been written down so you'll be looking at the profit or loss because the double entry should be debit profit or loss credit inventory <coughs> all right now we have this third part bank loan Ilunda company secured a bank loan of 2.6 million on 1st October 2x4 now whenever you have the loan thing I've already told you in the technique when you have the loan thing or any for example lease first of all obtain the agreement from the client because in that agreement you will see how much loan is there that means the amount of loan and then the interest rate and there will be terms and whether there are some covenants attached with the loans and what is the collateral they have kept against that all the things will be mentioned over there and the bank statement will show you that this amount has been received in full or still there is some amount left repayments of 200,000 are due quarterly with a lump sum of 800,000 due for repayment in January 2007. And then you know this loan should be split between current and non-current liability. The company met all loan payments on 2005 on time but was late in April and July 2000, 
So see whether there are any clause in relation to the immediate repayment of loans. Also see whether the company is still a going concern. So this is how you are going to make the procedure and then also see the disclosures. So what procedure you are going to write? Re obtain and review the loan agreements to see the amount, interest rate and other terms such as covenants etc. Inquire from the finance director whether they uh, whether there are any covenants attached and they have met all the conditions related to that. Recalculate the finance cost and agree the figures to the profit or loss and also with the current liability in the interest payable. See the schedule to ensure the liability is split between current and non-current. And then review the notes to the financial statement to to see appropriate disclosures have been provided. So this is how you are going to make the procedures. Substantive procedures again are very important for the exam and you need to make sure that you are having a grip on that. First of all, understand the concept and then see my notes, see all the procedures written over there because that will increase your vocabulary regarding inspect, review, depreciation schedule, non-current asset schedule and things like that because these are the documents you need to mention. And then try to write procedure by yourself and then see the answer whether you are getting it right. The B part is related to the going concern uh, and the review which we will be doing later.